This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social. I'm delighted to be joined here for the first time on interview, and I can't believe I'm saying that. I've been going to your fights for years, Dillian. Look, this weekend, Jermaine Franklin, how you feeling, brother? I'm good, bro. I feel good. I'm ready and um, ready to rock. You know, I feel strong. I feel fit. You know, I feel healthy and refreshed and revived, man. I've got to say, when I saw that you linked up with Buddy McGurr, I myself were gassed. I used to work with a team, Buddy McGurr, out in LA. Brilliant bunch of people. Just been speaking to Zizo there. He said that you've been knocking people over in sparring, that you've had it off, and that the reason that you come to the UK was because no one wanted to spar you out in the States. No, man, I'm, I'm, I'm easy, man. I've I just been working, man. I, I just try and do the best I can do. I work hard. I give it my all. And when there's nothing left, I give it a little bit more. I'm that kind of guy. That's how I've always been and that's how I'm going to be until the day I die. Obviously, this fight was made and we, we knew little bits about Jermaine Franklin. He came over and he's done a lot of time in the camp here. As you said, and Eddie just touched on, he says a lot online but doesn't say much when it becomes vocal, face-to-face, in person. Do you believe that he's starting to feel the occasion and getting <laughs> a bit nervous? Of course he's feeling it. You know, Obviously, we, we both do. You know, It's a big fight, big event for me. This is the biggest fight of his life and obviously... At the moment, this is a big fight for me to date, you know, obviously. But one difference is I approach every fight the same. You know, I've never had a massive amateur career. I never had anything going for me. Even though I was in number one position, I was still getting fight and I was still getting mistreated. So I'm used to it, man. You know, I'm used to it. Buddy's always told me, and like he said at the presser, he doesn't study opponents. But you yourself, have you had an opportunity to look at Jermaine Franklin? Eddie speaks about, obviously he's a big guy, but still got good footwork and got that sort of amateurish style. We know he can box. <coughs> yeah, of course he can box. You know? Of course he can box. I know they're going to try and box. They're not going to come and fight me. They're saying they're going to come and do this and the other. They're going to try and box, but I can box too. Do you feel like there's sort of a, a yes-men approach around him in the fact that, look, like you say... He's saying a lot online, but then when it comes to the presser, he says nothing. It's his team that have to pipe up for him. Why do you think that is, perhaps? In every way boxing, you can't read into these things, man. In every way boxing, you can't read into these things, man. You know, a guy might look a certain way and he comes and fight his ass off, you know what I mean? So, I don't read into too much into that, man. I just get on with what I get with, man. It's going down, baby. It's going down. You know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know these media obligations are long and draining on fight week. But look, um, we see the rest of the heavyweight landscape. Eddie has spoke about a win here, and that gets you that mega fight with Anthony Joshua, a stadium sellout next year. We're looking at March, April. Is that what's sort of been suggested to you if you get through Saturday night? No one has said that to me. He's been said in media. No one said to me, but I don't really care about that. It's heavyweight division. You can't bank on... You have to take what is there, man, you know, because a win don't guarantee me nothing, you know. It's a weight division. I just want to ask, sort of, before this, uh, before your sort of link up on the one fight <laughs> deal with the zone and Matchroom came about, we saw you at a Sky Sports event. I think you went to the Merseyside Derby. Was it for you just what was best for your career in taking an offer that made the most sense? This is the business, man, and we, we, we review all, all options and all things. Even if we're not interested, we still review them. I'm a professional. A fourth for Sky Sports, a fourth in Queensbury. So if they have something to say, then I will listen. That's all. I'm a professional. Just a couple more from me. We've got Fabio Wardley and Thomas Carty on the card. Something that is always refreshing, as you say. Look, if I'm fighting, I want my guys there as well. You've done that again this time round. Fabio, real big coming out party, and Thomas Carty obviously looking to potentially get in the mix at Croke Park next year. This is Fabio's probably last undercard fight. You know, I think he'll be world champion. I think Thomas can be world champion too. But he's a bit further on the ladder. One, I think this thing get this fight puts Fab, um, Fabio in a great place. You know, I was saying it's good for Thomas to get another win as well. And I think Fabio's gonna stop him and even Goldman in six rounds. Just finally from me, Dillian, we are looking forward to the much-awaited return this Saturday night. What can we expect from you? Fireworks, I know. But look, can I push you for a prediction, or are you not gonna make one? I'm gonna try and knock him out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best to knock him out. I'm gonna try. Brother, thank you very much for speaking to us at Boxing Social. Take it easy.